Hey guys, I just went on a little drugstore run today to CVS, which is, I think, my favorite drugstore. Um, after living in Portland, it's like the best thing ever because there aren't any CVSs in Oregon. And actually, because I was downtown, basically the only place I could go was Rite Aid. And I almost never went there anyway because it was sort of out of the way. So it was one of my, I think it was actually my first big drugstore haul since moving home. And I'm very excited to try out a few things. I didn't actually get that much, but after a while, you know, anything is exciting. So I'm going to sort of first impression demo and then my entire look is going to be drugstore today. So let's see what happens. First, let's get my hair out of the way because it's crazy. So the first thing that I'm going to use is a new primer. This is the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Primer, which was the most expensive thing I got at, I think, almost $13. Eef, and it's not even a full ounce, it's two thirds of an ounce, 0.68 fluid ounces. But I've heard only great things about it, and I've heard that you don't need very much. So we will see what I think. But I really love a light and infusing primer. Like, I just can't say no to them. Especially silver ones. I have the Dior Glow Maximizer Primer, and it's a much more golden primer, and this is much more silvery. So it's really pretty. Oh, it feels really nice. I don't even have a mirror in front of me. What's wrong with me? What am I doing with my life right now? Oh, yeah, that looks incredible. That's so pretty and really natural, but so shiny in the best, like in the best healthy, natural, glowy sort of shiny way. Moving on. Surprising to no one, of course, if you've been watching me for any amount of time. This is the CoverGirl 3-in-1 Foundation in 805. It is my favorite foundation, I think, of all time at the moment. Although I have actually been thinking recently that maybe I should go back and try a couple of the other ones that I used to love just to see if this holds up or if they hold up or which one I actually love better. But at the moment, I'm just so happy with this one that I don't even want to like waste a day wearing something else. I'm going to also, by the way, try to use as many drugstore brushes as I can, which means probably that most of them will be from this purple set from Sonia Kashuk. I don't really have very many drugstore brushes. Although I suppose the Real Techniques brush that I normally use is in Ulta, which means it kind of could be drugstore, right? Actually, I think I saw it in Walmart the other day. Is Walmart carrying Real Techniques now? When did that happen? Why didn't I hear about it? This brush is kind of scratchy. I don't really like it. I can't use that brush, you guys. I'm sorry. Old Faithful it is. Oh my god, it's like 18 million times softer. With the little bit of foundation that I have left, left on my hand, I'm going to mix that with the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Highlighter, which is lighter and a little more pink. I don't know if you can tell that, but in person you can tell. Just mix those together on with my finger, and then using my finger, tap that under my eye. Sorry, uh, my door is open, by the way. My husband's out of town, so I just left the door to my room open for once, but that means you can hear my dog, like, running around. Uh, so all the tinkling that you might be hearing in the background is all Ralph just, like, chilling and checking things out. Yeah, honey, we're talking about you. Anyway, so I'm using the Sephora Collection Eyeshadow Primer, which isn't really drugstore, but it's almost drugstore prices, and I actually, I thought about this when I was at the drugstore earlier, and I almost picked up the the Fergie eyeshadow primer because everyone says it's so good from Wet n Wild, um, but I literally just bought a new Too Faced shadow insurance, and I do not need another eyeshadow primer that is going to take me three years to get through laying around my house, so I didn't. Instead, you will just have to forgive me, and if this really upsets you, just pretend that that's what I'm using. Actually, I kind of wish I were. This one's getting really old. I should probably just throw it out and replace it with that one. Or another one. What's your favorite drugstore eyeshadow primer? Do you have one? Is there one that you love? Please let me know. For eyeshadow today, I have two Wet n Wild palettes. I have the Silent Treatment Trio. This is like my favorite purpley taupey shade in the whole wide world. And then I have a couple years ago, this was the Spring Collection palette that everyone went nuts over and I like went hunting for it. By the time I finally found it, there was one left and it was the best feeling when you're like, yes, I got it. So I, it's really beautiful. It has some really nice neutrals in it. A couple matte shades that are pretty great, these two here, and then some really nice shimmers. So it's really nice. I like it. So using a giant fluffy brush, I'm going to take this neutral skin tone shade and just sweep it all over everywhere so it's easier to blend out later 
same brush actually is what I'm going to use next. I'm going to take, I guess this crease color because it's the only other matte color I have in here. And just tap off all the excess because I don't want it to be too dark. And then just sweep that into the socket line and a little bit above the socket line. And I'm going to go into that trio that I had, the Silent Treatment Trio, and grab this taupey purpley shade on a flat Essence of Beauty brush. This is called an eyeshadow brush. Really? That's the best name you could come up with, Essence of Beauty? Okay, whatever. <laughs> That's really silly. Uh, for all, This is actually my very first eyeshadow brush. It was this one, and they had a couple pencil brushes in the same set, and I was so against eyeshadow brushes for so long. I don't know why. I was like, I can do everything with my finger. I don't need a brush. And then I got these and it like changed my whole life. So this brush actually holds a really special place in my heart and it's sort of the shape against which I uh, judge all other flat eyeshadow brushes because it's the one that I was used to for so long. It's really dumb. I, I have issues with this brush actually because I love it so much. It's, it's silly. And then I'm going back to this eight pan and I'm going to take this really pretty shimmery medium brown and layer that over this outer half of the eye just so it's not too purpley a look and then going back with that big fluffy brush and that transition shade that I used the matte brown and then back to that skin tone shade for eyeliner I'm going to use the NYX liquid liner in I can never remember what shade this is. Extreme Coffee. Um, I love this shade. It's so pretty. It's ridiculous. It's a really shimmery brown. I like dreamed of this color for a long time. I need a better mirror. There we go. How silly does this look? Can you still see me at all? Then I'm going in with the brand new Maybelline Brow Drama, which, <laughs> there we go. I am very excited to give this a shot because I would love a drugstore product that I believe in and trust. So we'll see. I got it in soft brown. Okay, so applying it straight with a brush is... Definitely better, but not a defined brow, and I prefer a defined brow, so actually what I'm going to do is grab an eyeliner brush. This will work. This is a Misha brow pencil, brow, not brow pencil, Misha brow brush, and I'm just going to take a little bit of the product off of the wand and basically apply it. Oh god, that was scary. That did not end well. Well, it definitely does set though. I can feel it. I can feel it setting. I think I prefer it applied with a actual brush as opposed to from the applicator. Um, but that I just like a more defined brow. That being said, I can feel it on my eyebrows. Like it's kind of sticky. And finish the skin for my powder. I'm going to use the Revlon Color Stay powder in translucent this is this is not this is not drugstore this is the precision powder brush from Sephora but I love it and I want to use it the purple Sonia Kashuk powder brush though is not bad I'm literally, I'm just too lazy to reach the extra 12 inches to get it. Contour, I'm going to use the NYX Taupe Blush and the Sephora Precision Contour Brush, which I actually used in my last tutorial, which I can link down below if you want, but uh, sort of screwed up and it didn't get in the video. So I figured I would use it today, even though it is not drugstore as well. I really love this brush. I think it's perfect in absolutely every way because it's tapered. It's small so it fits right in under your cheekbone, but then it's tapered so it blends everything out all on its own, basically without any effort from you. You just kind of go like that and it's done. That's it. For blush, I'm using the much raved about Milani Luminoso, which 
Everyone talked about how great this blush is. It's absurd. So I feel like it's time. It's time for me to give it a shot. And I'm picking that up on a Sigma large angled contour brush. It is my only absolutely 100% clean blush brush right now. And I feel like this deserves a nice new clean brush. It is a more peach shade than I expected. I expected it to be a little more pinky from the way people talked about it, but it's really pretty. Let's see how it is on the face. Oh yeah. It actually reminds me a lot of Makeup Geek Bliss. Maybe just a little bit more orange than Bliss. It's very uh, natural glow sort of look. I can see myself wearing that a lot this spring and summer. This one is a huge win for me. For highlight, I have the Wet n Wild Fergie Center Stage Collection to Reflect Shimmer Palette, which is really pretty, but not super pigmented from what I remember. I haven't used it in a while. Um, I actually, I saw this when I was at CV yesterday, and I was like, oh, that's really, oh, wait, I have that. Why haven't I used that in a while? Where is that? I had to go look for it when I got back. It was really bad. Oh, it's so pretty, though. My god, why do I neglect these things? It's so good. Yeah, okay, huge fan. I should leave this out and not forget that it exists. Before I do lips and mascara, I am going to set that, and I picked up the NYX Dewy Finish Spray today. I use the Make It Forever a lot, the Mist and Fix, but I kind of wanted to see how this is. A lot of people rave about it, so I thought I would give her a shot. It had a little bit of powderiness right through the center. And it's looking really good now. And even made that shimmer look a little bit more natural, a little less highlightery, and a little bit more I'm just really shimmery and glowy. Yeah, awesome. That looks great. Okay, moving on to lashes. I'm going to use the Sephora Collection Curler because it's the only curler I have. I used to have a Revlon curler way back in the day, though. And then for mascara, another new thing that I picked up, the Maybelline Full and Soft, which was my go-to holy grail mascara for years back in high school and college before I cared about anything about makeup. So I wanted to give this a shot and see if I still loved it as much as I used to. And this is not the waterproof version. This is the regular Full and Soft. And then moving on to lips, I didn't buy anything new today because I have like a million lip products. It's ridiculous. But I did grab a few options out of my drawer and I'm not sure what I want to wear. I have a Touch of Spice from Maybelline, which is the color that a lot of people are using as a Marsala dupe this year. It's very nude, natural lippy, but just maybe a little bit redder. Um, I have the Revlon Matte Balm in Shameless. No, Unapologetic. Shameless is the purple one, of course. Uh, which is very bright coral, sort of springy. And then I have the Maybelline, not Maybelline, Rimmel. Um, I still call these the Apocalypse because they were out in the UK first, so all the reviews about them were the Apocalypse. But here in the US, they're the show-offs, and this is a bright pink. It is the shade Apocalyptic, which is probably why it's the one that I picked. Um, I think I have to go with this one just because it's so ridiculously bright. It feels so good on the lips. This applicator is beautiful. It has like a little divot in the doe foot, so it holds a lot of product. I did that all with one thing out of the bottle. I just pulled it out and it was exactly as much as I needed. It's so pretty. Ah, I really like that. Yeah, that's great. It's super great. Last thing that I bought was Not Your Mother's Beach Babe Sea Salt Spray, which I've been looking for a salt spray, but I don't want to necessarily shell out for the Bumble and Bumble salt spray if there's a better one out there. So I saw this one and thought I would give it a shot. And that's all I've done to my hair today. It air dried earlier as I was driving across town with the windows down. So it sort of air dried like a crazy person. But I just sprayed a little bit of that in there just now and then sort of rubbed it up. And it does have a lot more texture now for sure. So I think I'm, I don't know, I'll give that one more of a chance to see how it works in my hair, but I don't dislike it yet. It smells like a day at the beach, like sunblock and coconuts. And there you have it. That is my all drugstore slash drugstore haul slash first impressions video for today. I feel like my skin looks incredible, um, not to toot my own horn or anything, but it looks really natural and really glowy and just very healthy. I actually, I work in a cosmetic store and the other day I happened to mention to one of my coworkers while we were on break that I was wearing CoverGirl foundation 
And he looked at me and like in total shock. He's like, I don't know if I can even speak to you anymore. And I looked at him and I was like, this is what I've been wearing for the last three weeks, just so you know. You never would have told, right? Like you, you never would have guessed that. And he said, yeah, but I bet your skin knows. And I was like, dude, there's nothing wrong with drugstore foundation. There's nothing wrong with drugstore makeup. Some products work better for some people, and I think that, you know, going to a cosmetic store and being able to get testers and being able to get color matched and all of that is great. The packaging is definitely better. There's a lot to be said about higher-end makeup, but there's also a lot to be said about a $10 foundation that matches my skin great and wears really well. So, I have no problem with drugstore makeup. I'm happy to give it a shot. I'm happy to have it in my collection and wear it all the time. So, you guys know me. I'm probably about half and half higher end and drugstore but every now and then it's kind of fun to challenge myself and see how much drugstore I can use in a given look and I would say I more or less succeeded except for the primer on my eyeshadow and all my brushes so anyway if you enjoyed this look please give me a thumbs up and subscribe I would love to see you around again Follow me on Twitter and Instagram that's at looklovelylaura on both of those and I will see you again very soon guys Bye!